This is it. The Western Digital Black SN 750 NVMe SSD. Oh, fuck yeah. 250 gigabytes of daggummit I'm fast. And baby, we ain't kidding. Read speeds of up to 3100 megabytes per second. This thing will fuck you up. So it's time. So get those Nambi Pambi SSDs out of your computer and slap this in your juice box and suck it. Awesome! With write speeds of up to 2,500 megabytes per second, that's nothing to sneeze at, baby. Finally, pick up that hot blonde from down the road. Pay the divorce right, settlement for your right. ex-wife. This okay. thing will put your children get through it, college. What it. the hell won't it do? Okay, God, I hate these type of commercials. Okay, so this NVMe M.2 has been getting a lot of hype lately. So, is this thing as good as everyone's saying? So I benchmarked the WD Black with three different benchmarking softwares, and mainly we're looking at the read and write speed here. Also, we'll be taking a look at the software and some of the options it provides. This test will be run on my MSI Meg Ace Z390 chipset, and I'm going to go ahead and install it on the most lower M.2 slot on the board because this has a built-in heatsink for mainly NVMe M.2 SSDs. So before we start anything, I've got to install the M.2. So I'll spare you the installation process because it's simple enough. You just unscrew the heatsink, put the M.2 in there, put the thermal pad on the top and screw the heatsink back on. And for these tests, I decided to keep the sticker on top of the M.2 rather than peeling it off. Yeah, I might get a couple degrees better cooling with this sticker off, but it'll also void my warranty if I peel it off, so I'm just going to keep it on. Now I'll put some graphs on the screen containing the sequential read and write speeds. I'm super interested to see if this M.2 can hit its advertised write speed. All right, and there you have it. I find it interesting that the only benchmark that hit the advertised speed, we're talking about read speed here, was Crystal Disk Mark. The other two fell way short, somewhere around 2,500 megabytes per second. So if anyone knows why that is, please let me know in the comments. All right, let's take a look at the software. First, I'm going to address what everyone probably wants to know. What is gaming mode? You can find it in the software's dashboard. When you buy this drive out of the box, there's some power saving functions within it, um, which can cause latency when you're gaming. Gaming mode, when switched on, will turn off the power saving function. So it will keep your SSD at full speed, firing on all cylinders at all the time. The dashboard gives you a quick view of such things as the model, the drive health firmware version, and security and different notifications that you may receive from time to time. It's good practice to check for firmware updates every now and then. 
which you can find in the Tools tab, but we'll get to that later. The Status tab. This is where you're going to find the basic information about your drive. You can check out the overall capacity. You can make sure that you're running at the right speed as far as PCIe lanes go. You can even check the temperature of your drive. And there's this little nifty life remaining bar. Who knows how accurate that thing is, but mine's still at 100%. I hope it is. It's only three days old. Moving on to the Performance tab. In here, you can see your drive's performance in real time. Notice when I begin the benchmark test that the graph begins to draw itself in real time. This is a really useful monitoring tool if you're constantly benchmarking. The Tools tab. This tab contains subcategories such as drive management and diagnostics. This is where you're going to go to update the firmware on your SSD. Also, if you want to do a full drive erase, you can do that here too. Just make sure the driver you're using supports it. Under Diagnostics, you're going to see the Smart function. The Smart Diagnostic is a short test that checks the integrity of the drive to make sure it's running smoothly. Under Advanced Information, you're going to see an enormous amount of information about your SSD. Stuff I have no idea what it even is. LBA format? Relative performance of L... I, I don't know. I don't even know if anybody needs to know this stuff. Again, we see a drive summary right here in the middle. It's good to have a little redundancy inside the software. The Settings tab. The Settings tab is pretty straightforward. You can check for application updates, not to be confused with the actual SSD's firmware updates, and change startup options. The Help tab. And yet again, this is another very convenient tab. You can get links directly to the support page, also links directly to the user forums, and to the user manual. You can also register your SSD and ask a question to customer service here. I don't know why more companies don't follow suit here. This help tab is probably the most useful tab in the whole software. There's just so much in one area. And if you don't already know, the WD Black SN750 is the second generation of its kind. There was one before this. The only difference between the last gen WD Black and the new SN50 WD Black is that the newer one has a brand new firmware to keep it running as fast as possible. That's the only difference between these two drives is a firmware update. And of course, the new redesigned software interface. They rebranded the looks a little bit. I think it looks a lot better. To demonstrate the speed of this drive, I installed the new Resident Evil game onto it. Let's see how fast this thing can load into game. Ready? Go! Oh yeah, this thing is definitely faster than all my SATA SSDs. Yeah, that was super fast. Let's uh, take a look at that again, and this time I'm going to try to count the seconds. Ready? Go! Alright, and there you have it, 2.3 seconds to load into a brand new game in 1440p. Not bad. Now, I wish I could say that I had a Samsung 970 EVO on hand to do a little comparison with, but 
I do not. Because the WD Black SN750 is comparable in speed to the Samsung 970 Evo. And of course, we got to do an Amazon.com price comparison. I mean, what kind of video would it be without an Amazon.com price comparison? We're only going to take a look at the drives that can stack up against this SN750. And it will be in the 250 gigabyte variant. Alright, so let's begin with the drive that I am reviewing in this video, and of course, that's the WD Black SN750. Right now it's going for $77 as of April 21st. I know it says the 20th there, but it is the 21st, 2019. And honestly, $77 for a drive that has this performance is not bad. Plus, you're getting the software, which has loads of options. I definitely think this is worth it. Moving on to the older generation WD Black. You'd be very hard-pressed to find an NVMe for $65 that performs at a near-enthusiast level. Uh, this thing claims to have 3400 megabytes per second read, which is even better than the newer generation one. How true that statement is, I don't know, uh, but this is definitely a really good NVMe M.2 for the money. It's not necessarily cheap, it's 65 bucks, but for an NVMe M.2, this is a, a good price. To be honest though, I'd pay the extra $12, $13 to get the newer generation SN750. Ah yes, the ever popular Samsung 970 Evo. It's $20 more than the WD Black that I'm reviewing in the video. I mean, what can I say? It's Samsung. It does do 3500 megabytes per second. Um, that's pretty much on par with the WD Black SN 750, uh, but it's $20 more. Um, but I mean, what can I say? Samsung has some of the best software as far as uh, cloning copying drives things like that it's super solid you don't get as many options as you do like in the SN750 software uh, it doesn't have a gaming mode on it but Samsung's tried and true guys it's honestly probably the best company out there for drives but uh, I'll stick with my SN750 WD Black So here's an interesting drive. It's the ADATA XPG SX8200 240 gig. Um, so that does fall in the same category as the ones we're going over. It's $5 cheaper than the WD Black SN750. It's pretty much right on par with the WD Black SN750. It does 3200 megabytes per second read, 1700 megabytes per second write. Um, on paper, that's 100 megabytes per second more than the WD Black. Uh, included, it comes with a heatsink. Uh, so it's uh, definitely very functional and in the looks department, it's doing very well. Looks awesome. I'm going to be doing a head to head video with another YouTuber called Systematic Hardware Welcome with to this drive My name is and Zach. the WD Black. We're going to see which one's faster, um, we're going to see which one has the better software and better firmware, so be on the lookout for that video. Oh baby, and it's on again. Introducing the $57 Indomitable Powerhouse. The no, I'm not going there. Never mind, not going there. All right, so this is the XPG SX8200, 256 gigs. This is the cheapest NVMe M.2 form factor drive you're going to get that has decent performance. This, I don't think punch for punch can stand up to the WD Black. If you're looking for a budget NVMe drive, this is it. If you gotta have that M.2, this is it. But you're better off just paying the extra $15 to $30 and getting something significantly better and faster and something that's going to last longer. <laughs> WD Black. <laughs> Overall, the Western Digital Black SN750 has a very promising future. It's only been on the market for about two and a half months now. And this thing is going toe to toe with the best of the best. And sometimes even surpassing the best of the best. Yeah, the price to performance isn't the greatest, 
but it is a bit cheaper than the Samsung variants, and it's just as good. And I think the software is even better than the Samsung Magician software. The proof is in Amazon.com. If you go check out this drive on Amazon right now, it's got four and a half stars. It's got 539 reviews. People love it. They say it's smashing the speeds of their Samsung 970 Evos left and right. The price is pretty solid too. $77 is pretty good for what you get. I think it equates out to 25 cents per gigabyte. So if you want an NVMe drive that is really fast, but you don't want to pay Samsung prices, this is the one for you. I mean, this has a super robust software that gives you loads and loads of information. Well, if you made it this far, congratulations. You made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully you liked it. Uh, if you haven't already, get yourself subscribed and like the video if you liked it. Uh, if you didn't like it, then give me a dislike. And I'll see you next time, guys.